it still looks brand spanking new. Uh, there is some discoloration, but besides that, there's no buildup of any carbon. This thing is completely clean. However, I'm using clean diesel, so it shouldn't be carboning up or having any kind of problems. The is a little bit of soot on the outside but that's because it was actually burning on the wrong chamber uh, my mistake turning the wires however this is supposed to be a less efficient and an older style unit also it's a different type of material this is the newer style it's from the 2024 model so it's stamped 2024 it's five kilowatts like all other units are because there's no eight kilowatt unit it's just a marketing scheme but um there is some corrosion right there i really don't like that but i thought that this thing would have a bigger burn chamber and therefore it could burn a little bit more efficient get more air and all that but it's just a channel so if you're buying this thing for improved airflow, holy crap, there is a difference though. Yeah, the weight difference, this serious difference. So just took a scale and this thing is about, yeah, it's exactly 328 grams. But it feels light because this thing, it's actually way heavier. It's four or eight. So this part is cast, I think. This part is stainless steel, 310S, and you can actually see and feel the difference because this bottom piece is just cheap as hell. So this thing, it's about 0.9 of a mil. It's about 1.3. So there is a difference in thickness. The next thing is, I don't know if you can see that, but this thing is higher up so the combustion chamber right here it's actually pretty much right there so that ring it's at the bottom but here it's actually been raised to right there so i don't know if it's going to make a difference though there are some subtle changes so the differences are just subtle but yeah the, <laughs> the difference in quality it's huge so i'm not an expert i'm not a mechanical engineer i'm not going to be claiming one but if i feel a difference in weight this thing feels way more beefier and also i don't know why they're using this stuff man it's <laughs> it feels so freaking cheap compared to that stuff i buy this stuff so you don't have to and that's a comment that i see a lot but in this case i actually did um, But we need to replace these things. This upgraded version, which is actually a solid upgrade, especially in quality of materials. It costs the same amount as this cheap ass thing. It's, this thing is about 14 euros upwards to 17 euros. This thing is 14 euros upwards to 18 euros, depends on the seller. And just by weight, there's a really big difference. The combustion chambers, they're completely different. This one is a little bit more dark, but when you see the photo side by side, this thing is actually deeper. Um, this one has a channel, so it's opening up the combustion chamber. Don't know about how much, but it does. And again, I don't know if it's gonna do anything else than providing a couple of cubic centimeters of more air, but. Yeah, the biggest difference is inside here. But when you need to replace these things, yeah, you better off buying the upgraded version just because it's 310 S steel. It's thicker wool. This is actually cast. This looks very cheap. It's a, it's a very cheap. It looks like galvanized steel or something like that. <laughs> it's very freaking cheap. And it's also very thin wool. But besides that, don't replace these things if you don't really need to replace them it's there's no need for it but yeah now is the question am i going to upgrade to beauty or i'm going to upgrade to beast but this thing looks way more beefy and i want to make the beast as reliable as possible because
because I'm actually heating up my house with it. I'm not heating up a car or going on a three day hike with the kids on the camp out or something like that. I'm heating up a house. So having a unit that's completely reliable makes way more sense for me. So I'm gonna do this way. I'm gonna upload the video to YouTube and I'm gonna let you decide. So the beefier upgraded one, in which unit should I put it? In the beasts or in the beauty? I bought just one for a spare, but <laughs> I haven't seen what one fill yet, besides people that actually uh, re-weld them and burn waste oil. I also bought a service kit. Um, it comes with two atomizer screens uh, for the glow plug, push thingy for actually pushing it in, a hook which makes way more sense than using uh, pliers. This thing to remove the atomizer mesh, it makes way more sense. It's actually really easy. Um, using pliers, you can destroy it. It's, it makes no sense to me. Um, you actually have a press tool in it, it will press to the depth you want it um, and actually it's necessary for it, otherwise the hole is not going to do its function. I think it's a Venturi effect, not 100% sure though. So all this stuff, this is for, so all this stuff, this is 3 euros total, it came as a kit, this is 15 euros. So with the kit came two gaskets, uh, sets two atomizer screens, press tool, hook, this thing, and for the glow block, and this thing, yeah, it's, it's, it's something else. It's completely different to build, and it's way better quality. But I'm still not 100% sure where I'm gonna place it, in the, this one or in that one. If you have an opinion about where I put the new one in, in the Beast or in the Beauty, let me know, put it in the comment list. I'm not 100% sure just because I have to open up the beast and that's just a pain in the ass. The thing is I have to remove it out of the case, I have to open it up, I have to remove all the parts and just have to... Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a lot of work. It's not going to be a lot, lot of work but it's just a pain in the ass to do it. But my girlfriend, she actually wants me to change out fuel lines after she saw the video because she saw a lot of failure points just because of that the white nylon style is pressed into the black fuel line that they're using as uh, an adapter and <laughs> she's completely right I never thought about it that way but so I actually bought automotive grade diesel fuel line for high compression uh, motors and it's capable of handling about 20 bars and it's exactly the same fuel line that's used for get a white nylon to be an adapter so we're probably going to upgrade eventually but I can't, it's a really pain he has to do it all again uh, and I'm also not 100% sure if it's going to fit because there's not a lot of room and those hoses are actually thicker uh, this is funny so my girl actually has messed me because <laughs> I text her and uh, I got to respond hey Baldy uh, so your viewers mentioned that mixing metals can cause reactions and the main issue there is galvanic corrosion while metal slowly degrades over time. With the metals you chose, uh, the process is relatively slow so it's not a major concern for me. <laughs> yeah, the, the next word I can actually hear her say it, however, uh, that's actually how she says that. <laughs> the fuel lines, it's a different story. Mixing rubber and nylon is risky because they behave very different on the low temperatures. Engineers usually avoid direct rubber nylon junctions. That both, both not? So on top of that, um, 
There are too many potential failure points when the rubber is pushed into the rubber and then clamped. I really don't want to see diesel leaking everywhere later on, so fix that shit. So the woman has spoken. I need to fix it, otherwise she's gonna get pissed. 